Considering I'm mainly a Call of Duty channel, this video might get me some dislikes, but you guys actually can't see dislikes anymore because YouTube removed them, so it don't even matter. I still hate that so much, it's so stupid. But regardless, this video, I wanna talk about why I'm enjoying Halo Infinite more than Call of Duty Vanguard, which it's really weird to me. It's, this can be kind of a Halo Infinite review in some way, but not really because I haven't played that much of the game, to be honest. I've only played maybe like 15 matches at this point. I don't know, something like that. And I feel like throughout those 15 matches, I've been having way more fun than I have in Vanguard multiplayer at all. We're just talking about the multiplayers here. I haven't even tried anything else in Halo. I haven't tried, uh, finished the campaign in Vanguard. And zombies is just, we know what zombies is in Vanguard. We don't want to talk about that no more. But in terms of just these multiplayer modes, I just, I feel like Halo Infinite's multiplayer just flows the way that I like more. You know what I mean? Like it feels more competitive. It feels more skill-based. And I just like that more. And you probably can tell that I feel that way even about Call of Duty because the Call of Duties that I tend to prefer are usually the ones that are more skill-based, are usually the ones that are more competitive. Like, you know, Infinite Warfare, Black Ops 3, Black Ops 4, even Black Ops 2. I mean, those CODs all felt very competitive and had more of a layer of skill to it. Whereas some of the other ones that I don't like as much, like the recent Modern Warfare, feels a little bit more casual and it's not really like your skill matters that much. It's just kind of run in there, shoot people and hope for the best. There's some skill involved here and there, but it's not like that much in terms of the core gameplay. But Halo Infinite, for me, has been a lot of fun. And just keep in mind, this is coming from someone who has literally never played a previous Halo game other than like once or twice, I might have touched a mode like once on stream. I was just like, let's go try out the Halo Master Chief Collection or something because I downloaded it. But that's literally it. I've never played another Halo game. I've never actually sat down and played like multiple games of it. I've, I've just never in my entire life. So Halo Infinite is my first actual Halo game. And that obviously is going to change my opinion. Obviously, I'm clearly a Halo casual. I'm not trying to say I'm some Halo veteran that knows everything because I do hear a lot of people who are Halo veterans complaining about this game a lot. And the same goes for Battlefield. Like, I'm not a Battlefield veteran by any means. I've played a lot of the old ones, but not a lot. And this recent one, Battlefield 2042, I've been not really complaining about that much. I really haven't had many issues with it the same way a lot of other people are. But your opinions are going to change drastically depending on what kind of a player you are. And the same holds true for Call of Duty. You know, people always complain about lack of content in Call of Duty, but lack of content's only an issue for the people who actually play a lot. You know, someone who casually plays once a week is never going to complain about having not enough maps in Cold War multiplayer at launch. Like, having eight maps at launch did not ruin that game's launch. People always say that, but that's not really true at all because majority of players probably never even experienced all eight maps more than a couple times because they don't play that much. Majority of players don't sit around playing Call of Duty all day. I wouldn't be surprised if the average play time for a, you know, individual Call of Duty player is probably less than like eight, like 16 hours or something. It's probably not that high. You know, people think it's way more than that, but in reality, it's really not that high. People tend to just play a couple times and then they probably forget about the game for a while because there's a lot of other things in life than Call of Duty. Obviously, people like me and a lot of you guys who are talking about it online and watching videos about it probably care about Call of Duty more than the average person, so you're going to play a lot more, therefore stuff like lack of content might matter a lot more to you. Halo Infinite and Battlefield 2042, not having enough content is not an issue to me because I know for a fact I'm probably not going to be playing these games that much. Regardless of me having a ton of fun in Halo Infinite, chances are because I mean, first of all, it's, you know, Call of Duty is Call of Duty. That's a big thing to me. I'm going to want to play and level up in Call of Duty a lot more than in Halo Infinite, just by the very nature of it being Call of Duty and something that I've cared about for the past 15 or so years. Halo Infinite is something that's very new to me. And although I'm having a ton of fun with it right now, I do keep in mind that I'm probably not going to be playing it that much going forward, unless, you know, there's a lot of cool updates and I'm like, okay, I'll try it out. But in terms of just looking at how much fun I've had, just just the subjective fun that I've had within this game the past couple days that I've been playing it compared to the past month of Vanguard. Yeah, I've been having way more fun in Halo Infinite. Every single time I'm playing, I'm having a blast. It's such a different game, of course. It's hard to compare because they're not the same at all. Obviously, Halo is an arena shooter, a very, very, very arena shooter type game. Like, it, Call of Duty is an arcade shooter to a degree, 
but it's not really on the same realm of being an arena shooter. I think it has been before. Like, I think Black Ops 3 and Infinite Warfare are probably the closest to Call of Duty ever being an arena shooter, but I wouldn't say that it's the same as that. You know, people compare that to, to Halo sometimes, and it's like, no, Halo is very different in how it plays compared to Call of Duty. You know, the movement is very different than Call of Duty as well. It's got this, like, low gravity thing going on. It's very interesting the way it plays into the game. It's not the same as Exosuits at all, so people always comparing Exosuits to Halo, Always doesn't make much sense to me because this is nothing like exosuit movement, it's very very different, but it works, it works for what they're doing. And the time to kill is probably one of the more interesting things because I've also always been told, oh like Black Ops 4's time to kill is basically Halo, which is the biggest bullshit I've ever heard, and I honestly believed it because I was like, oh I guess Halo, you know, Halo's time to kill is kind of like Black Ops 4, because I just assumed that was the case because that's what everyone said. But no, Halo's time to kill is like way beyond what Black Ops 4 ever was, like probably double, probably triple, I don't know. It's a really long time to kill, which you guys know I like slower time to kill, so it's, you know, normally a good thing, but obviously what the time to kill is here, I would not want this for Call of Duty, because I don't think it would work for Call of Duty. I think the Call of Duty time to kills that they had in Cold War of Black Ops 4 works, but if you go way beyond that, like what Halo has, then yeah, I think it starts to become a bit of an issue. But for Halo, it works perfectly fine. It definitely increases the skill gap. There's a big skill gap to this game. You can't just come behind somebody and shoot them in the back and expect to kill them right away. You have to be accurate with your shots. You have to be precise. You have to make sure you have, you know, good movement. So when they turn around, because they will turn around, like there's no way you're killing them before they turn around. The time to kill is long enough to the point where they have long enough time to react to those gunshots, turn around, and fire back. But because you put more damage into them, the chances of you actually finishing them off is pretty high, assuming you're actually accurate with your shots and you hit them. And of course, there are headshot multipliers, so you want to go for the head. And that is awesome. I think the gunfights in this game are fantastic. The only time I feel this, this being a bit of an issue is when you come across multiple people who are working together. And there's a lot of teamwork involved in this game. So I could see this being an issue for people who only play solo. Now, I only played solo when I played these 15 or so games. And I was okay with it because you can still work with randoms as a team. You just, you know, you're not gonna be able to communicate as well. But I managed and I thought it was fine. It's just sometimes you come into a situation where you come across three guys and you're right by yourself. And it's pretty much game over unless you're really, really good. And obviously I'm not really, really good at Halo just yet. So I can understand that. I can understand that some people might not like that because they want to be able to have a fighting chance against multiple people. But it makes sense, it, ju it just encourages teamwork and I kind of think that's okay. I, I think it's completely fine. And the time to kill is long enough to the point where if you do get into that scenario, you can escape it. Like you can just run away or like, you know, dash away or whatever. You can, you can get away from those enemies and the way the maps are designed are very cool in terms of the movement. It fits very, very well. So there is a lot of avenues for you to try and get away and outrun people essentially. And I really like how that plays. And I like how the map also plays with all the different weapons around the map. And of course, this is something I'm sure that was in every Halo game. So this isn't like new to Halo Infinite or anything, but it still is cool to me. And then you have these weapons everywhere that you can pick up. So it's not really like it's based around your class necessarily like it was in, you know, Call of Duty and, and even in Battlefield. It's more so it's an arena game. So it's like you want to pick up guns as much as you can, find the best stuff on the map. Sometimes it's in similar locations, sometimes it's not. I'm not too sure about how the consistency of where things are, but picking up new weapons is always fun and trying new things out. There's a lot of cool looking weapons too. It's all futuristic stuff, so it's always fun to use. And I have a great time with it. I have a great time with it. I also tried out the 12v12 mode, which I didn't like as much as the 4v4 arena mode, but it was still cool. You know, you have this big ass map and you just have more players. It at least lets you get into crazier situations and utilize the vehicles more because I didn't really like the vehicles in 4v4. I feel like vehicles shouldn't be in 4v4. I'm sure it's always been like that for Halo, but personally, that's probably my only complaint with this game is vehicles in 4v4 because if someone gets in the vehicle, and then it turns into like a 3v4 and then if someone else gets in another vehicle then it's like a 3v3 and it's just it just slows down the game for me and it's not really fun trying to fight some dude in a vehicle i think that works in the larger modes but when you got 4v4 i don't really like vehicles involved I'm, I'm again i'm sure it's always been like that but it's just personally not something i would like but that's all right literally everything else about this game i'm enjoying i've been hearing a lot of people complaining about the battle pass progression and like cosmetics and how that's like apparently a lot of microtransactions and stuff i literally haven't even looked into that because i don't really care the game is free so that's automatically not a big issue to me i mean if you compare that to call of duty call of duty is a 60 dollars game right it's a 60 dollars game 
and they have tons of microtransactions and there's barely any ability to earn things for free. So if that's the same with Halo, where you can barely earn anything for free and it's all behind microtransactions, but the game's free, like then I don't really care as much, you know what I mean? Like It's not as big of a deal to me because I didn't have to spend a dime getting this game anyways. The reason why it's a problem in Call of Duty is because like, okay, I've already spent $6 on this game. Can I earn some stuff for free? Like I understand having microtransactions, that's fine, but let me get some stuff for free at least. And there really isn't that many free things available. There's a couple skins here and there, but not a lot. Not enough for me to be like, okay, that's actually some good progression. Halo though, I've seen some things you can earn for free, so I'm not sure exactly if it's like everything that's behind a paywall, but I'm sure some stuff is, and that's just kind of what gaming is like nowadays, and I don't really see the big issue with it, if, especially if the game is free, you know what I mean? A lot of people can try this game out now, my friends who usually would not buy a new game can try this out because it's free, so I think it's fine, I'm not really complaining about that, and in terms of content, in terms of like guns and maps, I played a couple different maps, I played with a couple different guns, I haven't really repeated the same things that many times, I'm not sure what the numbers are for those things, but I feel like I'm getting enough variety for the amount that I've played so far. Maybe I'll get bored of it eventually, but I don't really care if I do, because there's a million other games out there, so it's not really a big deal, and at the end of the day, it was free, so that's a huge plus. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, let me know what you think in the comment section below, I will see you guys in my next one, peace out.